Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's Lauren here, and as you can see behind me, we're not in the shop anymore. We are on site to give these kitchen cabinets a total makeover. And I wanna thank Beyond Paint for sponsoring this video. We are gonna be using Beyond Paint to make over these cabinets and give them a new life. We're gonna go ahead and get everything unloaded here. We kind of brought the whole shop. <laughs> That's what Neiman told me. It looks like I brought every single tool in the shop, but you know, I didn't want to risk not having something that we needed, so I did bring a lot of things. We are actually a couple hours away from home and we are redoing the kitchen of my Nana's friend's house. She just moved in and she's just ready already for an update of her cabinets. As you saw, there are those old oak cabinets that are just wood and outdated. So they do need a new life for sure. And it's gonna look amazing once we get that new hardware on and those new colors. I am so excited to just see the final results. We're basically gonna be setting up the garage area in here, and this is where we're gonna be painting the actual doors and drawers, because we'll definitely wanna remove them and get them out here, so that way we've got a little bit more space to paint. for the colors of these cabinets is to actually do a two-tone look. So on the tops, we are going to be doing the color linen from Beyond Paint. And then on the bottoms, we're gonna be doing licorice, which is a black color. And not only are we doing a kitchen renovation, but we are also gonna be making over the cabinets in the master bathroom. Here in the master bathroom, we are going to be using the color navy to make over these cabinets down below. We're gonna start off by removing all of the drawers and doors from both the kitchen and the bathroom, as well as removing hardware and hinges and getting everything cleaned and prepped so that we don't get paint anywhere else besides on the cabinets. We are ready to jump right in. So the first step that I'm going to take is to make sure that I remember where all of the doors and drawers belong. Because if you know, if you've ever taken cabinets apart, it's really similar to furniture. You know, the doors and drawers go in the spots where they came out of, or else you're not gonna have good matches. This door might seem like it's the same size as this door, but truly it's not. So I'm gonna be labeling as I take down each drawer and door. And then also I'm gonna be making sure to keep these hinges. We are gonna be replacing the hardware, so I'll set that aside. We'll probably donate that to the ReStore. And then, yeah, so I'm gonna just jump right in. I'm just labeling with some painter's tape right now. And I'm just gonna start labeling one, two, three, four. And I believe there's about 28. I wanna be very informative for you guys, so in case you are interested in redoing your own cabinets, you guys will have a little bit more knowledge after watching this video. So as I said, I'm just keeping the screws and the hinges in this container, and I'm labeling the doors. As for labeling the actual drawer or doors, what I like to do is right inside where I took the hinges off, I'm going to just label it there because I'm, I'm, it's okay if I avoid painting that area since the hinge will be covering it up. So that number is gonna match right here to right here and that way I'll still know where that door belongs.
finished disassembling the kitchen. So now, of course, we're gonna move over here to the bathroom. Basically, I'm planning on doing everything the same in steps-wise. So now that we've got the kitchen disassembled, I'm gonna assemble, disassemble the bathroom cabinets. It's gonna be a lot quicker of a job, obviously, because there's only five cabinets in one drawer that can come off. So we're just gonna take all the drawers off and the hinges. And of course, label. All right, now the bathroom is all disassembled. We're gonna head back over to the kitchen and get to some cleaning. All right, so we got all of our cleaning supplies as well as prep materials. I just want to make sure that I prep correctly and that entails cleaning the surface as well as making sure that I cover all of the surrounding areas that don't want to get paint on them. So I am going to be using Simple Green to clean because this is the cleaner that Beyond Paint recommends. It is an all-purpose cleaner and it's really going to get that grease and oil and especially in kitchens, you just really need to make sure that you're getting all of that old food and grime. I know it's gross. I don't know about you, but probably don't clean your cabinets very often and when you actually think about it you know food drops down in them and things like that and you might not even recognize it so we're going to get all of that filth off of there and then I've also got my scrubby sponges because I think that'll really help me get the just the areas that have a little bit more crud on them it's a little bit squeaky I'm just gonna fill this sink with some water and that's kind of gonna be my bucket. Disclaimer, I told her to remove any of the important things in her cabinets and so the things that she left, she said she's okay with, you know, if anything gets on there. However, I'm gonna really try my best to not get any paint on there. the tops, I'm going to go ahead and rinse the tops. Above the oven and stove is going to be your most dirty spot just because, you know, when you're cooking all that grease just goes up. So definitely make sure that you clean extra well up here. Now we're gonna move on to the bottoms of the cabinets to clean those and rinse those as well. That's some dirty water and just to think that the water's dirty only from the actual outsides frame, framework of the cabinets and that's not even including the doors. So that's, crazy amount of dirt Ugh. but that is a prime reason why we need to clean before we're ready to paint and so technically we're ready to paint but like I said before we do need to cover the area so I've got a couple of different things I've got some different sizes of the blue scotch tape with the plastic that comes attached to it and then I've also got some frog tape to just tape off some of the areas like the walls and things like that where I don't want to get any paint.
think we're pretty much done with taping off everything as far as around the cabinets go. So we're gonna call it a night. We're gonna be back here bright and early. We're going to cover the cabinets and the countertops with the plastic tape attachments and then we'll get on to painting. We're back, day two. It's time to get started and dive right in. I am going to lay down the plastic with the tape along the countertops just so I don't drip any paints on there. And then we're gonna get started painting the tops of the cabinets. Now that we've got all the plastic laid out and everything taped off, we're finally ready for the fun part, painting. So as I said before, I am going to be using linen for the tops. So we're gonna get started with the linen and kind of work our way down to the lower cabinets. This is gonna need two coats, but we're gonna start with that one coat. And the reason that I decided to start on the kitchen before I even clean up the bathroom is because I wanna get that on there and started drying. That way, once I am done with the bathroom, I can come back here and it'll be that two to four hours of dry time before I'm able to put that second coat on. So, like you guys saw before when I used Beyond Paint, I am using a little paint tray roller. I forgot to, to bring my foil, but that's okay. We'll just clean it out later. And I've also got my roller and my chip brush because this paint is better if you roll it on and then you stipple in the areas that you can't reach with your roller. You don't need to stir this paint, it's just all ready. And remember, it looks funky when it comes out of the jar. It's gonna kind of glob out, but that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, so we're just gonna start with that much. I used about a third right there of the jar. I'm gonna keep you guys up to date with how much paint I actually use this time, since that is something that I forgot to do last time. But, you know, this paint, a little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna just go ahead and get started with rolling. I'm gonna be just focusing on the outsides. We're not gonna be painting the insides. So let's get started. I wrapped up the first coat of linen on the tops, just on the framing of the cabinets. And so I did go ahead and wrap that up, my kit and everything, because I will be using that again. Obviously, I've got to use it on the drawers and then on the second coat. And now I'm going to grab a new kit for a new color. And we're gonna move down below and I'm gonna be doing licorice is the color name and it's actually the black color that Beyond Paint has. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and we're gonna pour it in the kit just like I did before and we're gonna get started. I'm just gonna be doing the same exact process here down below. There's a little bit more area here for me to use my roller, but this is also some extra space that I didn't have on the top. So um, it might take up a little bit more paint, but then there's also things like the stove and the dishwasher that are taking up more space on that side. So just keeping that in mind when you're using the paint. And basically what I've been doing is going over all of the flat areas with my roller and then coming back in stippling the areas where it is kind of raised or there's some more detail and remember that stippling motion is just quick up and down motions beyond paint recommends that you don't actually use your brush in a brush motion but that you stipple and then once I'm done stippling, I'll kind of go over it with my roller one more time just to even it all out. We're making some pretty good progress. The top there only took me about 40 minutes, so that's pretty good time. Let's get on to the bottom.
That does it for the black. And yes, ugh, you need to get in all the nooks and crannies. Don't forget to pull out your fridge. You know, chances are there's always gonna be a fridge here, but if for some reason there's not, then you know, you don't just want a wood cabinet sticking out right there. So, you know, make sure that you paint everywhere that can be seen and that even can't be seen. So we're gonna, I am going to put a cover over the black paint now, and we're actually gonna let this dry in here. We're gonna head over to the bathroom, do some cleaning, and do the first coat of the framing in there, and we'll finally get ready to head out to the garage after that. Okay, I'm gonna use simple green again, and this is a lot smaller of an area but we've still got to clean everything down to prep that surface. This one was actually missing a kick plate down here. So basically that means that there's supposed to be a piece of wood down under here and it's not there. So um, the owner actually grabbed a piece of wood that's going to fit perfectly in there. So I'm going to paint that and then we're going to go ahead and attach that back under there for her. And so yeah, that'll kind of just finish it off down under there. All right, that was quick cleaning. Now I'm going to tape off the areas again where I don't want any paint. We're ready for color number three in the bathroom here. It's going to be navy. So this is a, it's a pretty blue navy right now, but remember this does dry just a tad bit darker than it looks in the actual container. We're gonna go with some glub glub again. Glub, glub, glub. <laughs> I'll never get over that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, first coat of the navy in here is finished up, so we're gonna head out to the garage now. We're out in the garage, and I'm actually going to subpoena Neiman to help me a little bit. So he is gonna be behind me. He's gonna be taking off the hardware of all of the cabinet doors and the drawer fronts and all of the above. But I'm gonna go ahead and start on the bathroom set. I already took the hardware off, so I am going to just go ahead and clean them and then get a first coat of paint on them. navy for the bathroom. I've got five of them. I already did the drawer and then I'm doing the inside first and then once that's dry for just probably uh, 30 minutes or so then I'll flip it over into the other side and that'll be it for that and then we'll move on to the linen and the licorice. Pro tip, don't cover the label that you made <laughs> or else you won't be able to see it. We're ready for some linen on the backs of these cabinets. I've got this table full and that table full and two on the floor. So this is definitely the most cabinets and these are the ones on the top. So we're gonna start with the insides, then those will dry, then I'll flip them over and we can do the outsides. I've already found a way that's gonna help me go a little bit faster. So that's 
taking my chip brush and actually going around the edges of the little areas where I can't reach with my roller. And then I'll go back and get the rest with my roller. And that will also help smooth out where I did the stippling motion. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for these next cabinets. And my paint is also still wet because I did go ahead and cover it with the cling wrap. So that's one tip if you don't want to, you know, pour out your paint and then clean it all up and stuff in between coats. That's something that I do recommend. Okay, first coat of linen on the backs of the cabinets is all finished up. So we're gonna move these over to the drop cloth to dry while then grabbing the next set that's going to be black so that we can clean and paint those as well. Alrighty, Whew. we have the first coat done on everything now. So the cabinets are going to dry, but I'm gonna head back inside and at least do a second coat in the kitchen, both on the tops and the bottoms. And then I'm gonna hope that I can get a um, second coat in on the bathroom as well before we head out for the night. And then we'll be back here tomorrow. We're gonna go ahead and start with second coat here in the bathroom, just cause this is gonna be real quick. And I'm just gonna apply it in the same way that I applied the first coat. It's, remember that Beyond Paint recommends that two to four hours of drying time, but the longer it can sit, the better. So um, we're gonna redo this one and then in the kitchen that will dry overnight and then we'll be back in the morning. I'm just gonna use this 400 grit sandpaper to kind of smooth out in between coats, just on the areas where I feel a little bit of roughness. Most of it really isn't, but there's just some areas that are. So even just that 400 grit real quick really smooths it out. So if you want that smoother finish, this is definitely a step that you want to take um, to make you have a smooth finish on your cabinet surfaces. Just sand in between coats. We're back. Day three and we are gonna get this thing finished up today. So we've got some things that we've gotta do. Remember I did the second coat on the inside of the bathroom already, so that's all done. And so now I'm gonna be out here working on finishing up the second coat of the actual doors and drawers and as well as the kick plate for the bathroom. Remember I told you we needed to replace that. And then after I'm done with the doors out here, I'll go into the kitchen, paint all that with a second coat, and that way the cabinets have a little bit of time to dry so that we can put the hardware on. Then once the insides dry, we'll be able to attach right away. So kind of planning out just what will be the best and make our time the most efficient. So that's kind of what we have came up with. So I'm gonna get to, to going on the Navy because I do wanna get that bathroom done first because it's a pretty small job. So 
that's going to be a breeze to knock out here this morning and then we'll just keep on trucking away at the kitchen as well also i did decide to go ahead and switch out my roller here so with the kit that beyond paint has available for 15 dollars, you get the tray the chip brush and the roller the roller comes with two heads so that kind of makes good for your second coat so i decided to switch it out for day two second coat and day two of painting and switch it out and go ahead and use the new roller I also went ahead and grabbed some new chip brushes at Home Depot. They're literally like 50 cents. So I just wanted a fresh start. So I just used a, or I just grabbed the same exact chip brush that comes in the kit. I just grabbed another one of those for each color. That way I can just have a new brush. Let's get started. to the second coat on the insides of the cabinets for the black. Then we've got to let that dry a little bit because I did notice that um, yesterday we probably flipped over the black a little bit too soon. And so there were some fuzzies on there, but you can't see them anymore because I already took those off. But there were some fuzzies, just meaning that it stuck to the drop cloth a little bit. So I just wanna be really careful since this is the second coat, I don't wanna flip them over too soon and have anything sticking. Finished up with that second coat on the insides of the doors and then I also went ahead and did the second coat on the drawer fronts just so that those will be ready uh, quicker and might as well while I have the blackout. So basically now we're kind of waiting in between. So we've got to let the insides of the cabinet doors dry and I think I'm gonna let them dry for about 30 more minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna be opening all of the hardware, getting all of the hinges and all of that good stuff ready so that later on we don't have to waste our time doing that. I really harp on this a lot, you guys, if, especially if you know your time is important to you, which it definitely should be, then you should be taking every single amount of time that you have to be doing those other smaller things instead of wasting that time later when it could have been done before. So we decided last minute, which I should have thought about this before. I don't know why I didn't because on my parents' um, kitchen remodel, I did end up replacing the hinges with the same exact style, but just a different color. And it just didn't cross my mind this time. But after figuring out that this is what the hinges look like, I just think that replacing them will help up the the makeover even more if that makes any sense and so i decided to head to lowe's and i talked with the owner here and so we ended up buying some new hinges so that we can replace the old brass ones that are very dirty and replace them with the brushed nickel which will also match the hardware poles that we picked out as well so this is going to look way better than this all right, we're on to the last coat of the navy. It's gonna be on the outsides of the cabinet doors. And just like I did on the inside um, framework in the bathroom, I am gonna sand down just really lightly with my 400 grit sandpaper between coats, just to give it that really, really smooth finish. And then of course, I'll go ahead and wipe it back with my microfiber cloth. I didn't do this on the insides because, you know, I'm, it is really, it is a smooth finish. I didn't do it on the insides just because 
you know, we're not gonna be touching the insides or even seeing the insides very often. So that was just an, an opinion that I thought it didn't need to be done. I actually am gonna change to a sanding sponge. Just a little bit easier to grip onto. Again, with this sanding, you're not trying to take any of the paint off. You're just getting any roughness out. And then it just feels really smooth after. Actually, this 400 grit sheet of sandpaper also comes in that kit. I forgot to mention that part. Let's get these bathroom cabinets finished up. We're back inside in the kitchen and I have already lightly sanded down the surface of the linen. We're ready to do coat number two on that while the doors dry and then we'll head back to the garage to do the last coat of the black on the doors and then we'll come back in here to do the black and then we'll be able to assemble. finished up with the linen so we don't have to paint any more with this color I did want to show you guys this is a quart size that's so 32 ounces I had just the top here of the cabinets and I didn't even use a full quart so I've still got that much left there's about that much left in there. So still got some extra paint and I'm actually gonna be leaving this so that just in case the owner wants to touch up anything or paint something else this color, she'll have it on hand. And that just goes to show you how far this goes. We are going to head back out to the garage and finish up the black now. Here we are back in the garage. I'm gonna do a light sanding on the surfaces of the black cabinets and then we'll get to painting. Okay, we're almost done painting with the black. We're gonna head inside because I finished the cabinet doors. So just one more coat on the lower area, the framing in the kitchen and we'll be done painting. Here we are, we are going to put the finishing touches on the bathroom, finish everything up in here. So I'm gonna start by removing all the tape and then basically just putting it all back together. So actually this bathroom did have these magnetic latches that I am going to put back on. The reason I took them off was actually just because I didn't wanna get paint on them when I was rolling them. I could have probably just done tape but I decided to just take them off all the way. So I've got to put those back on. So for the bathroom, she actually decided to go with some pretty unique hardware, which I really like it. They're all actually different than each other, but yet have some similar qualities and they go together. So this one's gonna be for the drawer. We're gonna go ahead and get that one put in. That looks good. 
I think this hardware is really gonna like pull all of this together. And then in the future, she's planning on redoing the rest of the bathroom as well, like the countertops and the wallpaper and things like that. So, you know, this is just the first step of the remodeling process. So now I'm gonna grab the door fronts and we are going to put the hinges on. We also got the new hinges for the bathroom as well. So we're gonna go with silver and then the hardware and then we'll go ahead and attach them. The last piece of hardware for the bathroom is going on now. Ah, it looks so good. The well, finishing touch is that I am going to put the kick plate down under here. So that's going to be my last step for the bathroom. This was a good buy. All right. The bathroom is complete. Ah, I love it. Now that this bathroom is finished, we are really in the home stretch. We're going to head back to the kitchen. All right, I went ahead and took all of the tape and plastic out of the kitchen. So now we are ready to assemble everything. I am going to start here in the house and put the hinges on. And then once all the hinges are on, I'll move on to the hardware and then we'll attach the doors. put the linen cabinets on. We got all the hardware on before, so we got the two hinges and the new hardware all attached. We're gonna see how we can put these on. I'm gonna attempt to do this by myself. I would definitely recommend putting the hinges on the doors before um, attaching them on the framing uh, just because it's going to be much easier to hold like this and then screw in only two instead of attaching the other side of the hinge. The hardware you could do either way but since we were doing the hinges I thought might as well just go ahead and do the hardware. Alrighty, we are finished up. Everything is hooked on and back in business. And the only thing that I've got left to do is touch ups, but it is getting dark outside. And in order to get photos for you guys, we need to come back here in the daylight. So I'm gonna be doing some touch ups tomorrow. Then we will reveal the whole thing to you guys. We're here, day four. I know I said I was hoping three days, but we've got to do some touch-ups. And yeah, it just took a little bit longer than I thought, as most projects do. For touch-ups, what I'm going to be doing is just using some detail brushes to go around and make sure that everything is covered and there's no wood, along with also just making sure that all of the hinges are tight and that the hardware is on correctly, that all the doors open and shut really well, and then 
will be finished. So I'm gonna start at the top with the linen, go around, make sure there's no wood showing anywhere. It's good to have these detail, smaller, finer brushes so that you can get into the really small areas. You know, I'm not gonna just bring my chip brush and go and get like a tiny little bitty area. So that's something that is always great to have on hand as well. Okay, I believe I've got all of the linen touched up, so we're gonna move on down to the licorice, which is the black color, and I am going to do the same thing, touch up any spots that I see need to be touched up, as well as just make sure that all those doors are on there correctly. Let's do it. Well, there we have it, you guys. We're finished, and wow, what a project. Wow, what a transformation these cabinets endured over the past four days. I wanna talk just a little bit about some things that I wanna remind you of if you are planning on tackling a kitchen cabinet set or even a bathroom vanity set because you know over the process of doing this a couple of times now, I've learned some things. And my first tip is do not rush yourself. You know, this time I gave myself kind of a, I think it's gonna take about three days, two full days, but then that first day we kind of just worked for a couple hours and then we ended up having to come back today, which is totally fine because I needed to make sure that it was right. But if you're doing this, just make sure that you're taking your time and since it is such a long and tedious process, so that means that you need to pay attention to the small details. When you hang up the doors, it might scratch the paint off just a little bit because it hasn't been that two to three day curing time yet, but go back before you're finished and touch up those little marks. That's what I was doing here today, especially that I'm doing it for a client. You know, I want it to be that quality finish. Another lesson that I wanted to point out to you guys that I learned and continue to learn is the time efficiency. You know, when a coat of paint is drying, what else can you be doing in order to make your time the most efficient? And I talked about that back when I was unwrapping all of the hinges and the hardware while that coat of paint was drying. There's no reason why I need to watch the paint dry, but I want to be doing other things to get me one step ahead and one step ahead as the time passes. Let's talk about the finish of the paint a little bit. There's a lot of talk about it being super rough and that you can see the brush strokes and things like that. Well, first of all, you can't see the brush strokes because we don't use a brush with Beyond Paint. And second, you know, the finish of it isn't smooth per se to the touch, but I wouldn't consider it rough. It's very hard to explain unless you're here, but we will do some close-up shots. You can't see the roughness, and it's not that you're seeing texture, but that extra little feel really helps the paint stay durable and have that protective coat over it. So. We really enjoyed using the Beyond Paint and it recommends, like I said, that two to three days of cure time and then another 30 days for curing until you can wipe them down with soap and water. So I am going to recommend 
for my client that she leaves these open for at least a couple of days and I'm gonna even tell her the longer the better and then just to be careful for that first month of these cabinets being painted just so that there's no hiccups but I am going to be leaving her some paint so let's talk about how much paint I used I already talked about the linen and how there's about a fourth of the whole jar left which is pretty awesome because this paint just a little bit goes a long way. I know the price tag can be scary, but just one of these jars can make over your entire area. For the black, I used about, I have about a third of the jar left. There was a little bit less of the black cabinets, so that's why I have a little bit more of that. And then the navy, I used less than half in that bathroom vanity. So you can definitely get that smaller size if you don't need a big area. If you are planning on tackling your kitchen cabinets or your bathroom vanity, there's a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind on to why you might want to do this as opposed to getting new cabinets as a whole. One is the cost. It is very much more cost effective if you redo your own cabinets. And then your second reason is, you know, just to save the landfill. It's instead of taking all of this out and replacing it with new we can give it a nice update similar to furniture with just a couple of coats of durable paint so if you guys are interested in redoing your cabinets i hope that this video really helped give you the courage and maybe even the inspiration to try it out for yourself but again i'm gonna go back to what i said earlier take it slow take it day by day and if you've got some helpers around your house definitely encourage them to come and help you it was a really big help having neiman around just to help move things and unscrew things and hold cabinets up sometimes sometimes it's great to have that extra helping hand so let me know down below in the comments if you guys plan on redoing your kitchen maybe even your bathroom I would recommend maybe starting smaller in the bathroom if you have a smaller vanity just paint that at first and see kind of how you like the process I personally am in it for the transformations I just love the way that it, it just paint can change the look of a kitchen like this is just a dramatic change and I'm really pleased with the outcome so I hope you guys enjoyed this video we will be back here next Thursday with another one and thank you so much for watching I'll see you on the flip side <laughs>